So welcome to uh, today's webinar with uh, Pub.Inc. and Dave Bricker. I want to introduce Dave to you. Sorry, this is the first time that we've uh, done a webinar using these particular tools. So we're still playing with some of the, uh, the technical things here and trying to get everything straightened out. But um, Dave Bricker is an author. He's a book designer. And he is also the creator of PubML. And if you happen to see the live interview I did with him last week on a Google Hangout, you'll know what PubML is all about. And I'm assuming you do if you're here um, today watching this webinar with us. And so Dave is going to, he kindly agreed after we did the, um, the interview to do a live training of how PubML actually works and how you can actually create an ebook using this tool. You can create a web book or an EPUB. And uh, if you watch the video, you'll understand the difference between those. But you're going to understand through watching this training today as well. And so without further ado, uh, just a couple of things. I'm looking at the chat here. Uh, you guys can enter your questions into the chat. And um, we'll take most of the questions at the end of this webinar today with Dave. Uh, but if there's something that's relevant to what he's speaking about at that particular moment, and we can interrupt him. Um, in a nice way, then I'll go ahead and get him to answer some questions as we go. Um, otherwise, go ahead and put your questions in anytime. Feel free to make comments. Uh, we like to uh, see you interacting with us uh, as we're going along. If you're enjoying something, if you like a particular feature, then let him know through the chat. I like to see those kinds of things too. And uh, at the end, of when he's finished, he'll be taking whatever questions uh, that we have left. Okay. And so I also wanted to let you know that when this webinar is finished, on this very same page where you are now, you can come back to it and there will be a replay. Uh, because this is being recorded uh, as we are speaking, and the replay will be up automatically. And so without further ado, Dave, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks so much for agreeing to uh, give us this training. I'm going to turn it over to you right now, OK? Thank you very much. I, uh, I really uh, appreciate it, Tony. So for those who missed last week, what we're going to be doing today is building um, eBooks using a tool called PubML, which is short for Publishing with HTML. And this is a tool that I created for WordPress. Um, briefly, WordPress is a free open source platform. Uh, it started off as a blogging platform, but it's become the backbone of over 100 million websites. Most web hosts have a click to install WordPress function built into their control panels, and it's an ideal, um, uh, ideal format for creating an author platform. So I've been a WordPress user for a long time, and because it has, um, it's almost like using Microsoft Word to create pages and website because of that text editor that's built in. It seemed like a great place to start for eBooks. So um, I started off uh, with WordPress and I'm going to take you very briefly through the process of creating a of installing a WordPress plugin, which is an add on module. There are thousands of them. And we're going to skip through that pretty quickly so that I can show you how the tools work. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, let me get that going. Can you see my screen OK? Yes, we can. Thank you. OK, great. So this is the PubML site. And where you would start is at get PubML, um, get started, get a WordPress site. And there is a link here, which really needs to be more obvious. My apologies. You download the plugin as a zip file. Um, from here, you go back in uh, to, this is the back end of WordPress. This is my dashboard. This is actually the PubML site, but you could put this in any site. And then plugins, add new. And of course, we're streaming my screen, so bear with me while it takes, a, it, it, sometimes things may take a few minutes to load. Uh, and then we'll click Upload Plugin. You can select it. And what you'll end up with is here in the left margin where it says PubML, and you've got Settings, My Books, and Fonts. 
I'm going to take you first to the settings page where I can give you an overview um, of the whole plugin. From here, I've tried to keep things as organized as possible. On the right side are the latest blog posts from the world's greatest book.com, which is my blog and an educational resource about writing, publishing, and book design. Um, it tells me the current version. I'm going to be pushing a new, uh, an update out uh, today or tomorrow morning. So um, just just keeping things up to date. Um, this is licensed, etc. Now, any at any time while you're using the software, there's a help function, and that tab is always available. And so, for example, if you were unsure about the settings, there it is. There's that that page with explanations of how everything works. So I've tried to make this as user friendly as possible. Answers are always there. And there are a couple of levels. I've tried to also set PubML up with default settings so that you can pretty much use it right out of the box. Now, the fonts that you install, these are Google web fonts. You can use any Google web font you want and you can add these to any book in your library so this is sort of a software level thing you don't have to install fonts in a particular book you can make them available to any books now you'll see there's a list of them here and some of them you can't preview and some of them you can't edit and that's because they are permanently embedded in the software you can't remove them um, and for example, some of them are actually uh, standard fonts that are not Google fonts. Now here is Allegrea, which is a Google book font. And you can click this and preview it and you can see that font right there in Google Books. So every font has, um, these. most of these are the basic fonts. Um, there's crimson text and there's old standard. Um, you can't edit them, you can't delete them, the software requires them, but here's a font that I added. I wanted this script font or something. So if I click here, I can preview that font in Google. And if I edit that font by clicking on the pencil, you'll notice that I've entered the link code provided by Google Fonts and I've entered the font family tag. I'm going to gloss over this also only because you can go to google.com uh, slash fonts. It's right here. As a matter of fact, I won't gloss over it. I'll go over it very quickly because I want to get into the nitty gritty of creating a book. And let me look for that font, Lobster. And here it is. And there's the preview, that same window that we open that shows you the characters in that font. And if I click the quick use tab, you'll see that it's very light as far as page load. And then they give me a link code and they give me a font family code, lobster cursive. And these, let me close this up, these are what I've pasted in here. I also choose, choose a uh, fallback font, which means that if, if for some reason, pardon the dogs barking in the background, um, if we have a, um, for some reason, the web font cannot load from Google. We have whichever system font is going to substitute. So we can choose any font, and then we can add any additional font right here. So um, I knew somebody was going to drive down my street honking their horn while I was doing this webinar. So pardon the background noise. OK, we've got the fonts. And now I'm going to go into my books. Give that just a moment to load. All right, back with me. Um, I've got a number of books in here and um, I'm going to create a new one. So I'm gonna click new book and what I'm going to do, we're going to build a little ebook today, and I've taken a chapter from one of my books that got edited out, and I'm going to make a mini ebook out of it. So, the first thing when I create a new book, you will see there's the book info, and there's a form here. And what I did is I copied 
the book intro form from Lightning Source, um, which is one of the big pod publishers. Um, and I took the same information so that we could have the same metadata in the book. I'm going to fill this out very quickly. Um, and the title is going to be um, Um, the copyright is going to be 15. This is all basic information. Um, my edition notes are for you. If you wanted to have, for example, one version for EPUB and one version for the web, you could choose which edition you wanted. You don't have to. In this case, the book is simple enough. I'm going to export it both ways. And I can choose my subjects here. I can go to the book industry study group and I can choose... Um, I can look up if this is a memoir, if this is literary fiction, if this is self-help, and I can plug in those codes here and descriptions. And here I'm going to go ahead and put in my name and give myself a role as author. And I've prepared a cover for this book. Now, one thing that's different about PubML books uh, from standard eBooks is that we actually create um, the cover and any other art to the size of the book, at least to the ratio. So for example, I'm gonna create the digital equivalent of a six inch by nine inch book today. Uh, so I'm just gonna choose that ratio. It's, the inches don't matter because the book is gonna scale to fit the screen. But I've got a, uh, I'm gonna click upload, add image. I've already uploaded it, um, well, I have an update, so let's start it from scratch. I'm gonna upload this file. Here is my Matic cover. I'm gonna choose that image. Oh, it's still uploading, here we go. Choose the image, and then I'm going to submit that book metadata. This is gonna set up this book in my library, which will load in a minute. And I'll slow down once we get into the nitty gritty. I just want to get things set up. From here, um, I guess I, what I have is, I'm gonna go and I have this in Google Drive so I can show you. <clears throat> I have this chapter, Time to Sale. It's just text that I can copy and paste. I, I uploaded it from Word so I could you could see it when I screen share. This is going to be the text of my book right here. I wanted to get organized in advance. I have some footnotes. There's a reference in this book to a Cassiopeia jellyfish. Some people might know what that is, might not know what that is. And I've got some media. I've got some maps. I've got some photo galleries. And I've got some uh, YouTube playlists. And I'll show you how that works afterward. And now I have a publisher page, just the raw text. And I have a tab here that's going to go in the top that's going to explain how web, work, web books work. And then I have uh, another, uh, another one that's about the whole concept of putting books on the web. So I'm going to add some navigation tabs above the book, which is another thing that we cannot do in, um, in EPUB, but we can do with books on the web. And all, that will all become clear shortly. So what I'm going to do now that I've got my um, let, let me go back to the PubML tools to my books. Here's my latest one, A Trip to Elliot Key. I'm going to go ahead and edit the book. And that's loading. Here we go. And it says we can create sections, which are the equivalent of chapters. Uh, a new text section or a new full page image. I'm gonna start by creating a new text section. Copy, oh, it's gonna copy and paste, but this is, um, this is going to be my title page. And this is gonna be very simple. A trip to Elliot Key. And then in my formats, I'm going to select title, drop this down, and save the section. Tony, did you have a question? 
I just wanted to let you know that when you type, Google Hangouts automatically mutes your sound. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I hope I hope I haven't left anything out, but I will type and speak independently. Good good thing to know. So I've created a simple title page. Let me go back to my table of contents. Or I could go directly to news text section, but I want people to see when this loads back up again, screen sharing and, and is eating a certain amount of the bandwidth, so it's not normally this slow. Here we go, now I've got a title page. I'm gonna create a new text section. This is my publisher information, and for this, I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. I'm going to copy this text. Paste it in. <clears throat> and now Now, because I pasted it from Google Drive, it didn't behave exactly the way I want. I'm going to come back and paste it directly from Word. Here I am trying to make it visible. I think most people will be pasting directly from Word anyway. Let me delete this and paste it in from Word, and now it should come in as independent paragraphs. So. Format, headline, format, subheadline, all of this stuff here is going to be small print. I'm going to center these elements. And then, for example, I've got a link to my blog here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the WordPress link tool, open that in a new window or tab, PubML. Anytime you've got HTTP colon in front of the text, WordPress automatically knows that it's a link, which is very convenient. You'll see that the URL is already plugged in and the link text is there. <clears throat> so now I have this book with my links in it. I'm gonna go ahead and save the section. It tells me at the top that the section is saved. And now because this book involves a sailing trip, I'm gonna create a new full page image instead of a new text section. And then before I do my main text, I'm gonna break off and we'll do some, some things to style this book. But I wanna show you initially how easy it is. And this is gonna be chart of Biscayne Bay. And I'd like to put this up in the front of the book here. I'm gonna click upload slash add image. I can pull it from the media library or I can drag it and drop to WordPress. Here is my Biscayne Bay chart, also created to match a six by nine book. Let that load, choose the image, save the section, and then let's go, um, before we go anywhere else, I didn't want people to have to export the book and check it and then go back in and edit it and export it, and check it, and this iterative process, <clears throat> if you had to export every time, would get really cumbersome. So there's a preview tab that's always here. And what I can do is see what we've got so far. This is gonna show me exactly what the web version of the book is gonna look like. So here's my cover. And when I click to the right, I've got my title page. There's my publisher page. There's my full page chart. I could have designed margins into it if I wanted. You can see my areas when I roll over to the left or right, and then it takes me back to the cover because that's it. It's also building a dynamic table of contents. You can see the four pages that we've put in so far, and there's also a settings tab that allows me to do certain things with the book that 
that we'll get into in a moment. And these are default, they're always there. Let's go, before we continue this book, we can, let's, let's look at some of the styles that are associated with this book. There are a lot of ways that we can control the appearance of the book, at least on the web. EPUB is much more limited. You're constrained by the size of the screen. We don't have paper textures and backgrounds, but for example, in styles, here's the background. Now, PubML in its current configuration gives you one custom background. I'm gonna choose a background that I've already uploaded to my WordPress library here, media library, and I've got a lot of stuff in here. Let me find it. Take me just a moment. Here it is, it's this nautical chart. So I'm gonna choose that image and then I can either tile that background, which means it repeats over and over, or I can set it to full screen. And you see here that it previews exactly. If I wanted to upload a different paper texture, the default is a nice uh, cream colored stock. And there's a default color that matches it. And I could use any other color, but if for some reason the paper takes a little time to load, this color is so close to the paper and it will load first. And you can test these things right here in the tools. For example, here's the default background and here is the custom background. So users will have the option to switch between them. I'm using the nautical chart because it's a nautical story. Now we go to the layout tab. It's set to six by nine. Um, if I wanted it custom, I could put whatever I wanted in there, but these are standard sizes six by nine, five by seven. So if I was doing a six by nine inch book or a five by seven inch book or a square book, anything I want, I can design here. And then um, page margins, I can do the same way. So unlike traditional eBooks, I can really control my page layout in, in a lot of interesting ways. In custom, I can set the top, bottom, outside and inside uh, as a either a pixel value or a percent value. So there's a lot of control. I usually just leave these default settings alone. This is how I like to design a book. The running heads are here at the top of the page. You can choose left, right, or center. Um, you can choose a running head ornament. So here you see them on the side. If I wanted to switch one out, um, let's see if there's something I can use in my library. Um, let's see, that's 32 by 32. That's a small ornament. Let's try that. And it won't preview here in this case, but we'll see it when we go back to the book preview here. And I want the chapter title. What do I want to put in the running head? I'm going to leave it on the right of the page. Um, book title, author, chapter title, or custom text. I can select these options. Let's save this information. Give this a minute to load. Changes saved. And now we go to the text styles. I'm going to choose first a custom chapter ornament. And here we have a mock-up of a page with explanations of what these different text um, elements are. And this is great because we can customize things with our web fonts. I'm gonna go ahead and take this nice ornament here and now you can see that that is going to appear as my chapter ornament when I, when I want to use it. Any of the standard styles here, for example, here's my headline text, and it'll load up here. You'll notice that all of my fonts are here, and I have another one called Reader's Choice. Reader's Choice means that when the user previews the book and goes to the settings panel, that if they choose one of those built-in fonts that um, the titles will change, the body text will change. So I have the ability to take any one of these styles or create a new one. Here's the signage style, for example. It looks like this. I set my size, my line height, my indents, my margins, uh, things like that. And um, I can edit any of these values. I can turn hyphenation on. I probably would not want hyphenation on in a title. Let me go back to my uh, headline. 
Now you see hyphenation is turned off. There's something here called runt control, and a runt is when you have one line at the end, one word at the end of a paragraph that occupies the whole last line. So if you have a title that's going to wrap, better to have the last two words wrapped to the next line. So this is automatically going to ensure that no more than one word, uh, no, that at least two words end up on a second line. So that can really help the appearance of your book titles, your chapter titles, things like that. Justify left, center, right, top margin, bottom margin. How do I want to treat the various styles? There are even the default styles are editable. So you've got a lot of options here, um, but the defaults that are given to you uh, to work with, um, there are plenty of them and they work just fine and you'll find very little need to change them in most instances. I wanted this tool to be something that people could pick up and go, um, but more uh, technical users could get in and customize the styles. Initial capitals. Let's choose for this book. This one's a little bit uh, uh, more contemporary perhaps. So. Um, or I can choose no initial capitals and it'll use whatever font is being used in the book. Let's save that information. And then let's go to text ornaments. And here we can choose an ornament. I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. You can see how the preview shows up. If I have a, a section change in a book and I want to use a chapter ornament, it's optional. But um, here we can do it. Let's save that style information. And then I'm going to go to my page numbers. I'm going to leave these as reader's choice so that anytime the reader changes the typeface that my page numbers change, I'm going to go ahead and put an M dash before and after my type, my, my page number. So you can see exactly how that's going to look. And um, that's going to be centered vertically between the bottom of the text and the bottom of the page, depending on what margins you use. So you see how easy it is to customize the styles. Let's save that. And now I'm going to go back to my preview tab. Takes a minute to render the book. Now you'll notice, oh, I went back. Let's go back to the, uh, we don't have a lot of text in this book yet, but I have my settings and I can now, I've got my custom background. I can change to that wood background. I can control my paper color, um, go back to the cream stock or, or make this for a black and white reader. Um, and I'll show you some more of these settings in a moment. Um, I could choose, for example, Old Standard, which is one of the built-in fonts. And now we get a very classic appearance because this is an old linotype machine font from the, uh, from the late 1800s. And here is my running head, that ornament that I chose. Let's close this up and I'm going to add, let's go back to the table of contents. I'm going to go to my Word document and I'm going to copy and paste my chapter in. I'm going to create a new text section. And here it is, 130. We're almost done with our book. I just want to show you some of the key features. And when we're done, we're going to export this book for the web. And we're also going to export this book um, into an EPUB file. And I'll show you how you can upload this to Amazon. So here we go. Here's all my text. All I've done here is copy and paste from Microsoft Word. I've done no special formatting or anything like that. Here it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and set this chapter up to look elegant. So using my formats, this one's going to be title. This one's going to be my subheadline. Now, the first paragraph of a section generally is not indented. So that's going to go there. Here, I'm going to go and select that first one as a drop cap, and I'm going to select this first 
short phrase as small capitals. This is going to give me an elegant look to the book. If you want to add some of those classic typesetting flourishes, you can. I'm going to go to the top, and here I'm going to insert my chapter ornament. Take that extra break out. Now, it's just a section ornament here. We have a, a placeholder. But when I export the book or when I preview the book, now that I've added this chapter, let's let the preview render. It takes a moment. And let's see what we have so far. Oops, I was saving the chapter. Let's try again. Here's my book. And I'm going to go directly in the ta table of contents to this chapter. Here we see the ornament. And I can scroll through. And you'll see that this is paginating. And this is just a web page. As a matter of fact, when we export this, we could drop it on a web server and put it directly on a web page. Now, coming back to my settings tab, if I wanted, for example, to go back to, say, Crimson Text, you can see the type change in the background. If somebody's reading on a phone or perhaps is older uh, and uh, doesn't have great vision, um, we can set this type to very large, medium, small. We can set our line spacing to large, medium, or tight. So um, coming back here, there's a lot of options. I can also full justify or left justify. So some people prefer left justified text. It doesn't look quite as beautiful as far as it occupying a box on the page. But you don't have the spacing issues that come up with uh, creating text that is um, um, justified, where you have to adjust the spacing between words. So here you're going to get your best spacing. Let me close this preview up, and you'll see we're still editing the page. Now, one thing that PubML books, that web books give you, um, that ebooks don't, actually two things. One is footnotes, photo footnotes, and another is the ability to add Google Maps, Flickr photo galleries, or photos from your WordPress library, like we use to populate the section ornament. Um, so we've got maps, we've got photos, and we've got YouTube playlists. And I have a list of those ready to go. Now, what I would usually do, and in this case I, I, I did, I would create all of this stuff and get it organized before I started creating the ebook. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to leave this tab. This has been saved. I'm going to make sure it's been saved. Click the save, section save. I'm going to create a footnote first. And I'll show you what these extra tools do. I'm going to add a footnote. And adding a footnote is very much like adding a post or a page in WordPress. And let's hope I spell this correctly. It's This is a footnote for the Cassiopeia jellyfish. Because many people won't know what that is. I'm going to click Upload, Add an Image. And um, in this case, I already added it earlier when I was testing. Otherwise, I could click Upload Files. I'm going to save you from having to watch the file upload. Here is the image, and I'm going to go to my text where I had saved some of this information. Um, as a matter of fact, let me do it from the, from the Google Drive. Footnotes. I'm going to copy this text. Add new footnote. I'm going to paste it in there. And um, of course, coming from Google Drive, it gives me funny line breaks, which I'll take out. Easy to do, easy to accomplish. And then um, Cassiopeia jellyfish. Let's call it jellyfish is found in warmer coastal regions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link, I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a live link in my there's there's the link we're going to open this in a new tab hit add link 
And this is going to be the only footnote. I'll click Save down in the lower right. This is the only footnote that is in our demo ebook that we're making today. Um, but you could have dozens or hundreds of them. If you read uh, thebluemonkbook.com, if you go to my memoir, you'll notice there are about 100 footnotes in the library. So having added footnote, when I go back to the footnotes tab, you'll see here is that footnote, all created, all ready to go. Um, if I want to preview that footnote, I can click and it actually previews the footnote here in tool. So I can see that it makes a nice little pop-up card that I can add to my book. Um, I can edit it, I can delete it. And if I go back to my table of contents, which will wait to load, and I edit the time to sale chapter, I'm going to look, here's Cassiopeia, and when I go to my footnote tool, it says add footnote, and you'll notice there's only one on the list, but all I have to do to link that footnote is click there, save the section, preview the book, make sure we save the section first completely. Let's try preview again. Okay, let's go to that chapter and Did I pass it? Here it is. And you'll see it as a dashed underline. I'm going to click on Cassiopeia. Eh, it's not going to work because I'm giving a demo. I assure you it did earlier today um, when I built this. Let's save the section, which maybe I neglected to do. Preview the book, time to sale. And my footnote's not working for you. Not sure why, it's worked every other time. Let's hope we have better luck with the, um, with the um, media files. Now media is a little bit more complicated, but it's very powerful. I've got three links that I wanna add there are three places, and I've got media sources and media groups, and let me show you how these work, because they're not difficult once you understand them. I want to link Sailboat Anchorage that Bud left from. I want to link to Key which is one of the islands that Bud passes by on his sailing journey. And I want to link to, um, uh, what was the other one? Stiltsville, which is an that I mentioned briefly in the text. And he passes Stiltsville by, and it's a bunch of houses on stilts in the middle of Biscayne Bay that have a lot of history behind them. So what I want to do with this book is I want to provide a little bit more context for the reader with these links. Nothing that ruins the text or distracts from the story, but it gives people stuff they can go look up. And this can be, as you see on the left, any combination of videos, Flickr photo galleries, Google Maps, or images that you load up into your WordPress um, uh, image library. I'm going to add a new media source. And because I've had such poor luck pasting from Google Drive, I'll show you what, what it looks like anyway. I've got my footnotes. Here are my links to my media. I'm going to paste them from Word just so we don't have any problems. Um, so it's basically the same document. Here is the anchorage at Dinner Key. I'm going to paste that link in there. Um, I'm going to call this Dinner Key Anchorage. And then I'm going to go ahead and load up all the media that I need. So I'm going to hit Save and Add New. I've added a new media source. 
here is a Stiltsville map. I'm just going to copy my link from Google Maps. And I'm going to call this one Stiltsville. Save and add new. So if you're organized, as I was here, and you've got all of your links set up ahead of time, your links to your Flickr photo galleries, things like that. Here's a Flickr link. Now, this is going to be photos of Stiltsville. I can call this Stiltsville the title that's going to load when we show the media. Save and add new. I have just a few more to do. Um, here's Soldier Key. Save and add new. There's my map for Soldier Key. Here is a YouTube playlist where I have interviews of people sharing their memories of Soldier Key. And here are Flickr photos, some very old pictures of Soldier Key. Let's make sure we hit save and add new. Flickr photos, and these are also going to be Soldier Key photos. So I'm going to save and return to the Media Manager. So if you create custom YouTube playlists, if you create Flickr galleries, and, and if you're unfamiliar with Flickr, that's Yahoo's um, photo archive surface. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I can preview these. For example, here's the Google map of Dinner Key Anchorage. And you can see here the shore of Miami, and you can see that view of that map. Um, here's Soldier Key, different map that I created and copied the link from, waiting for Google here, and it's giving me an error. It's a Google error. I don't think it's my error. Either that or I pasted the link on. Here it is. Problem with Google. Uh, so there's Soldier Key, and these are live maps. That, uh, that you can move out. These aren't just images. These are interactive maps. I can click on there and uh, main house, cook house. These are my notes that I made on this map in Google Map Maker. Um, now, Soldier Key, I've got a whole Flickr gallery. Oh, this is my YouTube. I'm sorry. That's not Flickr. That's YouTube. Here are my videos connected with this. And then here are my Soldier Key photos. And this takes me to Flickr. This is a public. You have to set the privacy to public within Flickr. We'll give this a minute to load. So you can preview all of these and make sure they're working. I'll give this another second and then come back to it and let it load in the background. Flickr is being slow to load. OK. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on Dinner Key Anchorage, and I'm going to click on the Dinner Key Anchorage Media Group, and I'm going to associate that media. And now you'll see it has a one next to it. So let's see if my preview is going to work here. How does this look inside the book when I click on the link? I'm going to refresh this whole page because I'm getting weird behavior, and I, um, I actually built this book earlier and everything worked fine. So we'll see if what the glitch is if we can. If I click on Dinner Key Anchorage here on the right, you'll see that it highlights on the left. So I can tell that this group has one element on it. Let's do Soldier Key. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to associate the Google Map. I'm going to click here. Hit the checkbox, associate the media, and I'm going to click the flicker and associate the media. Let's see if my soldier key photos loaded. Here they are. So you can see that gallery on Flickr that we're pulling from. Don't need that anymore either. I'll close it up. So now you'll see there's a number three. If I click the preview, Well, 
that that works anytime you're not giving a demo. So moving on, we'll, I'll, I'll show you the other book. Um, and here's our Stiltsville. Let's associate the media and go here and associate that media. The reason we have a left column and a right column is that these are going to be my available links for the text. And instead of having to link one word or one phrase in the text to any combination of these different ones, I can group them together here. Let's go back to the table of contents. Wait for that to load. Go to our time to sale. And I'm going to let this load now that I formatted it and I'm going to add the link to it. So I'm looking for dinner key. And you'll notice that my media groups, here's the add media icon. There's my dinner key anchorage group. And as he sails down the bay, listening to his piano sonatas, uh, let's move here. He's got some wind. Let's find that um, Stiltsville, double click that word, add Stiltsville, and then here's Soldier Key, which he passes next. And here are my links. Let's save the section and then see if the um, preview wants to work for us. Otherwise, I'll show you other examples that do, that I made today with the exact same software. Let's go back to our chapter, time to sale. If I click dinner key, there it is. I get an overlay and my dinner key map loads. So it's not, it is working in preview now. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see if my footnote's gonna work when we get to the um, Casapia jellyfish now. Footnote doesn't want to work. Okay, but let's go to Stiltsville. If I click on Stiltsville, there's my Stiltsville map. And here's Soldier Key. I hit Stiltsville again. Oops. I must have linked Stiltsville to Soldier Key. Let's go to Soldier Key. Remove the link. Let's go back to our media. Click Soldier Key. Save. And preview. Scroll through my text. I can always also use my right arrow instead of clicking to the left or right. And let's see if we get soldier key. And we're getting the map. So there's some problem with my copying and pasting. I'm going to go to my books because I built this earlier today to make sure it would work. And I'm sure it's a problem with my links. Uh, here's the same book. Let's go ahead and preview my earlier version. And go to my contents. Same book, slightly different cover. Um, there's my Cassiopeia jellyfish with the um, footnote working, and when I go to Soldier Key, I'm getting the, um, getting the map. So that's the idea. Now let's go back to this book and let's go to the Export tab.
Now there's a couple of ways to export this book. I can copy this short code here and I can drop this into a WordPress post or page. Just copy and paste it and the book will actually load on the page. I'm going to show you um, an example. Here's someone using PubML to offer a sample of their book in their blog. And all they did is take one page of the blog, drop the book in, click to read. Wait for that to load. Here we go. The book loads and you can read the book. There's some custom typeface that they used on the titles. There's the contents and this is the beginning, the first so many chapters of the book. Um, and you can see that they've added signage, all sorts of custom pieces, things like that. And they also have some tabs, help on how to use the book. Here's a link to Amazon to buy the book. We'll do the tabs last. Coming back to this book, um, I can download this PubML file and it renders the book. I click download. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just open that zip archive. And here it is. Uh, you won't see this until I load it in the browser, but what I've, what I've got here is just a bunch of files. And if I click the index.html file, um, let's just pop this here as a, as a tab. Here's the book and you'll see it's running right off of my drive as an HTML ebook. Um, it's basically a website and all of those uh, things should work. There's my dinner key map things like that. So that's the export function. The other thing I'm going to do with this book is I'm going to download an EPUB file because I might want to take this book and put it up on Amazon. Click the download link and I can use the Azardi reader, uh, which is the EPUB reader that I like. If you want to use any other reading software, you can. I'm going to click open. It's going to download that EPUB file. We'll give it a moment to read into Azardi. And it's not going to look as good as the PubML version because it's an, e e uh, an EPUB file. But if I go to my bookshelf, you'll see that the cover is here. And if I click on the cover, here it is. Here's my table of contents. And I can scroll through. Dave, we can't see your screen. Oh, that's right. You can't see that. Hang on. Let me see if I can share that screen. Thank you, Tony. Um, Cause that's not working in the web browser. Let me start the screen share. So just briefly, here's my, can you see the is already reader? Yes, now we can see it. Okay, so here are my list of ebooks. Here's my table of contents. Thanks for catching me on that because you screen share one application at a time. So I could go right to that time to sale. The links are gone from it, um, but the reader formats it. It left my header graphic, it left my drop cap, it left my big and small caps. So at least in this reader, and every reader varies, I get a pretty decent presentation of the ebook. Um, coming back, here's just another example. This was my writer's guide to powerful prose. Um, and here's the book as an EPUB file. Um, 
keep some of my styles. Others get thrown away, and that's the nature of EPUBs. So um, EPUBs limited by nature. Here's the Blue Monk as an EPUB file, some client books and things like that. Um, I'm going to close this up and go back to uh, my screen share. And I'm almost done except for one other feature. Tell me when you've got my PubML screen back. We've got it. We can see it. OK, great. So I'm going to go here. There's a tab called Navigation. This is something else that you don't get with um, EPUB eBooks. There's the Table of Contents in the Setting tab, which I can hide or change the order of, um, but I can't delete them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new tab. In the interest of brevity, I'm just going to do one. And I'm going to copy from Microsoft Word. And I'm just going to add a help tab, which explains how to use this book and the different kinds of links, things like that. <clears throat> this tab, uh, reading help or just help is fine. I'm going to save the section and I'm going to return to the tab list. Give that just a minute to load. The other thing I can do with an exported PubML ebook is I can take the files, I can throw them on a web server, and they work as a website. So here you see I can edit it, I can get rid of it. Um, I could change the order if I wanted my help to come first, or maybe uh, between the table of contents and the settings. Um, and that stuff gets saved automatically. Let's go to preview one more time. And now you'll see there's my help. I guess I didn't save the order, but there it is. There's my settings, there's my contents. So if you wanted to add information about the author or information about how to buy the book, you could do that. Um, if you want to see a full working example, um, my own memoir was the bluebunkbook.com. And uh, it's where I took some of these media links and things from. And I have here something about web books, um, how to own the book, you can download it. Um, there's a PayPal link, um, my settings panel, my table of contents, and I can go to um, right into one of the chapters. I can click on, for example, Trimoran John, and you'll see there are. Well, he was a great guy. And people talking about who he was, um, things like that. Here are my footnotes and so on and so forth. So in a nutshell, that's um, the PubML, PubML tools and the product that you can export from them. This one here is not running on a WordPress site at all. It's just the book up and running. So um, that's the PubML book. It would be very easy. Um, I'm going to go to my Amazon account, kdp.amazon. Dot com. I'm going to sign in and I'm going to take the EPUB. I'm not going to make this public, but just to show you, um, I've got my books and some client books here. Um, let's create, uh, where do we add a new book? Create a new title. Um, I'm just going to call this demo, demo. Um, publisher, all of the optional stuff, description, XYZ, um, English language. This is, uh, I hold the necessary publishing rights. Uh, I can add categories, age ranges, things like that. I can upload my book cover um, and then upload my book file, enable digital rights management or not. But what I want to show you is that uh, 
in my downloads folder, which I don't know is is uh, visible. Um, here's my EPUB trip to Elliott Key. Let me open that and upload it. And you see how easy it is. Kindle KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing will convert my EPUB file to Kindle format. I take a few moments. So then I'll, I'll uh, browse for my cover, things like that. See if it allows me to preview it right here. Let me browse for that uh, image. Invalid dimensions. They want it to be bigger than the one I uploaded. Um, there is a link here to preview the book in their online previewer. Save changes and continue. It's making me sign into Amazon again. And it actually gives me a Kindle demo. Oh, and it took my cover anyway. Right, so here's what it would look like in a Kindle based on what I uploaded. So these tools work for the web and they also work for uh, Amazon. So unless there are questions, that's the demo. And uh, if anybody wants to see something or, um, oops, I clicked myself here. Hang on, let me turn my screen sharing off. And uh, I'm happy to take questions uh, or hear comments or whatever. Hi, Dave. I was looking at a question that we had earlier. Uh, I have to scroll back up to find it. Can web books contain interactive fields like PDFs can have? I'm not sure what she means by that. I'm wondering if she means uh, where um, a reader would actually fill something in. Yeah, as far as a form, I don't have the ability to do that with the tools themselves. But for example, because WordPress gives you a code editor, you could go in and if you wanted to put an interactive form inside that book, you could certainly copy and paste the HTML code for the form in it. And you would end up with an interactive form that would call whatever CGI scripts on a web server, that kind of thing. Essentially what I've done is because EPUBs are so inconsistently rendered between different different uh, software, different e-readers, different uh, web plugins. I went with the web version and figured out how to get the pages to flow and paginate. However, what we end up with is, except for some sleight of hand with the display, with the way books look, there's really functionally no difference anymore between a book and a website. This is just a different way to display a website. So if you wanted to add flash animation, if you wanted to add images that had transparency, if you wanted to add web forms or just about anything else, at a certain level, you have to hand code it in, but um, it's absolutely possible to do. Okay. And uh, another question about the groups with the media. And uh, there's a little bit of confusion about why there were two columns. I know that you explained it, but maybe you could go into a little more detail about that. You'll notice that in my list of links, it's a very good question, and, and, and it's, it, it looks more complicated than it is. Um, in Soldier Key, for example, I want to click on, I want to highlight Soldier Key in my text, and I want to link that to one group of media. That text, that link links to a photo gallery, a YouTube playlist, and a map. So I have three things in one group. So my media sources, my maps, my images, my playlists, they're all on the left side. And my media groups, which are what I link to, are on the right. Now, very often I have only a map or only a um, uh, a Flickr gallery, or perhaps one image from, from your WordPress media library. So you have a group of one there, but the one on the left is the sources, and the one on the right is how you combine them into, you, 
you, you create the ability to link to only one item. So from the reader's perspective, what would happen is when they click that link, they would get the option. They would be able to view the map, the photos, the video, however well, they will they appear at the top photos. for all of those items. Okay. So in other words, you can add multiple interactive elements with just one link because you've created that group selection. Exactly. I could even add three different YouTube playlists. Okay, I see. It's, it's however many, and it just grabs them and loads the thumbnails and uh, gives you all of those options. Okay, excellent. Well, I think that's pretty cool that you can, um, within that web book, that you can add photos. Or Are there other things that we didn't look at that you can possibly add? You showed us maps. The, the okay. tools are built in to do images from WordPress, albums from Flickr, custom Google Maps, or YouTube playlists. Um, as things develop, if people um, have, have uh, suggestions that are not really esoteric that would require a lot of development to, to uh, accommodate one person, but if somebody wanted, for example, we're doing so much Google stuff here, we've got Google Maps uh, and um, YouTube, why would we not do Picasa? A lot of people are using Picasa, so I could see adding that as, as a source as the, um, as the software grows and people continue to use it in different ways. Okay, so I wanted to remind you that if you're watching live and you want to download PubML, you can just click on the yellow button on the right in order to download PubML. And uh, it's free to download and free to try. And then if you want a subscription to it, you'll notice that that link takes you to a page where you can actually um, uh, subscribe to this uh, software. Um, if you're watching this as a replay, I will have the link for you to PubML in the description below. And uh, if you're watching this live, you can simply come back to this particular page anytime and watch the replay or you can go to my YouTube channel, pub.inc, and you can find it on one of my playlists there. Okay? And uh, again, Dave Bricker, we thank you so much for giving us a step-by-step -step walkthrough tutorial of how to use this plugin. And again, this is a plugin that works with WordPress so that you can create web ebooks that you can integrate into your site uh, or that you can just put up on a site of its own. You can even include a link there in that tab, that handy tab that Dave showed us, so that if you want to sell that ebook, so what you could do, for example, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, you could put up a couple of sample chapters and then put a buy, and then put a buy link in the tab. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. The other thing uh, that you can do with WordPress is there are plugins that allow you to give access to content only to people who have a password or only to people who are um, members of your site. So for example, another way to sell a book is simply to put that short code, that little uh, piece of code that they give you, paste it into a page, put that page behind a paywall so that only subscribers who have paid get access to it. And uh, then you're selling an ebook and you're completely bypassing the traditional mechanisms where people are taking commissions from you and, and, and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. I just believe there should be an alternative to it. Right. So if you want to go the traditional route, then you simply export the EPUB. You can upload it to Kindle, as you demonstrated for us. You can upload an EPUB to iBooks or to Kobo or to any number of online retail sites. You can even upload that EPUB to your own site and sell that as a digital downloadable file. Or you could upload it to something like uh, Gumroad. So then where they've already got the payment uh, gateway set up for you. And Correct? EPUB, EPUB is accepted by Google Books. It's accepted by um, iBooks. It's pretty much accepted by everybody. So if you can get that EPUB file out with halfway decent formatting, you're already way ahead of the game. Upload it to any bookstore you want, and uh, they'll accept it and do what they do with it. 
don't expect things to look consistent from one reader to another, but people seem happy with EPUB too. There certainly is a big market for eBooks and this is a way you can you know, produce the EPUB on your own and then put three or four ch attractive chapters on the web to get people interested in the ebook. I was even imagining um, if you wanted to sell the EPUB either on your own site or on one of the traditional online retailer sites, you could even include your web book with the interactive links on your own site behind a password protected uh, page as you suggested. And you could, if someone purchases the EPUB, you could have a code in the back of it or a link to the interactive book on the web. Am I correct? Absolutely. You know, so in that way, you could add value to even your EPUB. Th there's any number of different ways to do it. What, what, I, what I think is, what, what I like about it is, look, EPUBs were really designed to be read offline. Um, but now we're wired all the time. If you're on an airplane, if you're on a cruise ship, you're always wired. Everybody's got their phone. Everybody's always connected. And ebooks are not really leveraging all of the wonderful resources we have on the web, like YouTube, things like that. So what I wanted to do, for example, with the with the bluemonkbook.com, I wrote the book and I, and I mean I treated it as a piece of literature. I, I spent a year editing it on my own with a, with a group of people before I hired a professional. I got very serious about that book. It was my book and I and I wanted it to be as as uh, excellent as I could possibly make it. And then I wanted to find a way to enhance the reading experience without cluttering the book. That book has 350 video clips, 200 photos, 80 Google Maps, and 100 footnotes in it. And that was a ton of work, but I didn't want those to clutter the reading experience. I didn't want them to, um, um, to interfere with the text. I wanted to deliver elegant book typography, which is something I love. And so by putting the, by hyperlinking the media, and you're welcome to drop it all into the text, just drop in a link, just, just put in a YouTube embed or, or, uh, drop in a, I mean, these, there's any number of ways to put galleries and things on a web page, but instead of cluttering up the book, I really believe that a lot of people still enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. So how do you combine these two things where you've got all of this interactivity, but you don't want it interrupting you. Maybe you want to finish the chapter and then come back and find out more about soldier key. Well, there you go. So, to me and you can even in the settings panel you can turn off the links to the footnotes and you can turn off the links to the media so you can just read the book and shut all that stuff down if you want it's all options for the reader and one of the things that's so amazing to me and and why i asked you to be on the pubbing tv to begin with is dave's backstory i think this is an incredible tool and i love that we have the option to add rich media to a web book. Uh, but it's interesting to me that Dave actually created this tool out of his own desire and his own need for something that he wanted to offer to the reader. So not only is he an author, a book designer, he's also a, a tool creator. <laughs> and so Dave, we thanks again for we thank you again for showing us um, to give it for giving us this training and showing us how to walk through and how to create an ebook for the web with rich media. And I hope we see you again soon. Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for to all of the folks who uh, joined in and participated today. Okay, see you guys all later. <laughs>